way too easy to look outside. Sitting so comfortable without a spot. Hello folks and welcome to a wise game video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of tech talk. That's right. We're actually going to be looking at in today's video is how to transfer video files from your Windows 10 computer system to your Kindle Fire. Now, my Kindle Fire happens to be an HD8. Yesterday, I decided to transfer some video files to my Kindle Fire. I like having this as a backup in case of power outages. It gives me something to do during the time that we lose our power. Now, I used to transfer files all the time in the past, but I haven't used my Kindle Fire in at least a couple of months. So I did forget a few things, and to refresh my memory, I decided to visit YouTube. Uh, but the videos I found on YouTube, they were at least four, five, six years old. My Kindle Fire is about a year and a half old. And my computer system's about four months old now, so I wanted to make an updated video. So I'm going to cover all the steps involved, even converting your files if you need to convert them so that you could play them now on your Kindle Fire. So I will have timestamps in the comments section of today's video where you could skip in advance to different parts of the video. But keep in mind though, I do kind of describe things throughout the whole video and you may be a little confused if you don't watch the whole video. So yesterday when I tried to transfer some files to my Kindle from my Windows 10 computer system, it wasn't recognizing each other. So it wasn't doing anything. And I'm like, boy, you know, I used to do this in the past with no problems at all. So I tried a few things. It took me a couple hours, but I should have went back to the bare basics at the very start of the day. And I would have fixed this within like five seconds. It came down to one thing that is very important. You have to have the proper cable. Now, the cable that comes with your Kindle Fire, I thought I used to always use for this. But come to find out, I used it yesterday, and then I even tried another cable that I had. But come to find out, they weren't made to transfer files. They were just for charging up your Kindle device. So you have to make sure that the cable that you're using does support transferring files. Now for different sections of this video, I'm going to be using my iPhone as the recorder for this so we could see both my Kindle and my computer system working together. Um, it's not very clear video, so just bear with me when it comes to that, but we should be able to get the point across. So let's get started with transferring files from your Windows 10 computer system to your Kindle Fire. Okay, now here we see my computer setup and my tablet, my... Uh, fire device and then here we see my computer tower and my DVD external drive now at first when I was looking at this on the playback on the phone it looked terrible the video it was actually the sound that was the culprit the sound was awful so I ended up going back and I'm doing the sound over so that's why some of these comments that I have in the video like right here may not match to what I'm saying now so now we need to connect our cable. So we need to connect the cable that's got the 3x7mm end, which is going to go into your Kindle Fire, with the standard end of USB going into your computer system. So once that's connected, what we need to do now is activate the Kindle Fire. So once you turn it on, from the bottom of the screen you're going to want to swipe up. It's going to look like a padlock icon, and that's going to unlock it which will now activate it where the computer system now recognizes it. Now what we need to do is to go to the top of the screen and you're going to want to pull it down. And then that little menu is going to appear. Here, I find the best thing to do is to go to the crank wheel that's for your settings. Sometimes the bottom of this will also have the list for you, but I think going to the crank wheel right there is a lot easier. Once in here, you're going to be in your settings. You want to look for this setting right here, connected devices. You're now going to want to tap on that and open that up. Once in here, you're going to see USB. Now you want the USB right there to be lit up in white just like mine is. You don't want it to be grayed out. If it is grayed out, that means it's not connected properly or something's wrong. 
Once you've done that, this list is going to populate. It's usually set defaulted on the top one, which is charging. Mine was still left on transferring files from the last time I did this. Again, I did do the voiceovers to make it sound better, so if you see some of these comments that don't make sense to you, that's the reason why. On my original take, I kept saying hit instead of tap. You don't want to hit anything, you just want to lightly tap everything so you don't break anything on your Kindle Fire. Okay, now I know that this is a little shaky and my fingers are in the way and all that, but basically we're just going to do it again. We're going to click again or tap on USB. We're just going to put it on transfer files. Make sure that that bullet lights up. And then we see this message now on our computer screen. That means you're all connected and ready to go. And again, just make sure that you're using the proper cable. So now once we've done all that with the Kindle device, now we go back to the computer system. Now you want to locate the folder called File Explorer. Mine's right down in the toolbar. Yours may be also. Just click on that. And then right here, you want to go to this PC. Once you click on this PC right here, let me move this over a little bit. We're going to see right here, Devices and Drives, Fire. That's your Kindle Fire. That's where you want to now click on that, click on internal storage. It's going to let you know how much room or space you've got left in your Kindle Fire. And then here is all the different folders that you're going to use to put your files in from your computer system. And these folders are now going to be sent to your Kindle Fire. Now, mine did not have a folder in here called video, so I made my own folder by just going here, clicking on new folder, and, and then once I've done that, it did work, and my Kindle Fire is now recognizing any files that I put in here. So once we do that, we're going to see that I do have a Hercules movie in here, and my Kindle Fire is now recognizing it, which I'll show you guys later on. Now another folder in here that's very highly used is called DCIM. That you could also put like video files in, you could put your photos in there, which can be accessed through the Kindle Fire desktop icon, Photos. Now something else I want to cover too, because if you're trying to research issues that you may be having doing this, is that a lot of people will notice that they don't see in their computer system portable devices. Now, what I'm talking about is we have to go down to our start. We have to now right click on it and we want to go to device manager. Now defaulted, mine did not show portable devices. What you have to do to get around this is go up to view and just click on show hidden devices. And then it should now show portable devices. If we click on this, we're going to see now that Fire is now on the list. That's another indication now that your computer system is picking this up. But again, as long as it's showing up in your File Explorer, right down here, you're good to go. Now we're going to get into actually creating the video file that we want to show up on our Kindle device. So I have these old DVDs that I made quite a few years ago, but the format on it is not supported as it stands right now in the Kindle Fire. So I'm going to have to convert this also. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my DVD ROM and I'm going to download it to my computer system. Now I just put the disk that I want to do in my ROM and it automatically populated for me. If this does not automatically populate for you, all you have to do is go to File Explorer again, right down here. And then you want to go to this PC again and right next to where it says Windows C, you, you should now see your DVD drive. What we want to do now is just double click on this and it's now going to take you to the file that you want to work with. So now what we want to do next is right click on the file. We want to go down to properties 
and we want to see right in here what type of file it is. This is an MPG file which is not supported for the Kindle Fire. So now what we want to do is we want to pull up Google and we want to go to this site right here. Amazon Kindle Fire supported video formats. And in here it's going to let you know which ones are supported. So we could see the most popular is definitely MPEG4 or MP4. And then they have a full list down here of all the different kind of versions that they support. I will provide this link in the description panel of the video. So now we need to convert my file over because again it is not supported. So to do this it's very easy with this free software and this free software is called Prism. It's a great piece of software. I used this thing for years on about three computer systems that I had. Now all we have to do for this is just basically we want to make sure that the output that the output format is on MP4. So if we click on the drop down box, we're going to see all the different formats that this program can actually do. And MP4 is your safest bet. So let's put it on MP4. And then file options, we're going to leave that alone. And then you want to save it to a folder once it's completed. So for me, I made a folder called Videos Converted. So what you want to do here now is just go to browse. This is where your, all your folders are going to be. And I have right here videos converted. Uh, select folder. And now it's going to send it there. So now seeing mine is a file, I'm going to use add files. It's going to open up my file. And then I'm just going to click it. Or you could drag it from here. Say you could drag it and just pull it down into that spot. We're gonna hit open, and we're gonna see now that it is now in the list of the program. All you have to do now is just hit the button called Convert. And what's great about this program compared to some other apps that I used, they only do about five minutes on the free trial version. This one still does your full video. Uh, you just have to make sure that each time you open up this program that you pick the option of home use only, not commercial. Now, depending on the length of your video, this could take some time. Uh, it could take 15 minutes. Mine's saying about 8 minutes right now or 6 minutes. So it depends on your file size of how long the conversion is actually going to take. And at times you will even notice next to video positioning that the time may even go up as you're doing this but this is actually the time remaining right down here at the bottom now again if you do have going by the list that i showed you guys earlier with the kindle fire supports if you do have a dvd or a video with that format then you don't have to do this process okay now it seems like it finished so now we're just going to go to the folder that I named the videos converted. We're going to double click on that and we're going to see it right in here. Let's just click on it, open it and make sure that it, that it works a bit. And we could see that it does. Now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it, we're going to go down to properties, and we're going to see now that the file type now is indicated as an MP4 now, which is correct. And then if I mouse over these, we're going to see, we're going to see that the length is 44 minutes, which is correct. Because this is an hour show usually when it's on television, but these videos are commercial free. So Prism did, for free, convert the whole video. Now all you have to do here, if you don't want to leave this in the list, 
is just right click on it right on the top it's going to say remove selected files from list just hit that remove and now it's cleared now the next step now is now sending it over to the kindle fire so now again with your kindle fire activated with the steps we showed you at the start of the video now we're now going to send it to that so we're going to open up our file explorer again we're going to go to this pc we're going to click on fire we're going to click on internal storage and then again i'm going to be using my videos folder that i made we're now going to open up my folder videos converted we're going to take this one and we're going to drag it right in here give it a couple of seconds for it to load and there we are now it should be recognized now on our kindle device now you shouldn't need your computer system anymore to finish this Okay, so here we are on the Kindle Fire, and we're going to make a believe that the power went out. We even got a candle lit for the occasion. The only thing left to do now is just stare at your walls. But wait a minute, we just transferred over some cool videos. So let's get started. First, I want to point out that the top navigation bars where it says videos and all that, don't use that one. That's only used if you want to rent or buy from Amazon, streaming, movies, things along that nature. But again, if you lost your power, you're not going to have any Wi-Fi to be able to use it. But if we scroll down, I do have on my device, my videos. You should too. Where my videos that I just did should be held in. Once we tap on it and open it, we're going to see that there's my two videos. Now, the one that I did end up selecting to play for you guys was not the one we just did today in today's video. I did this one yesterday. But they both work basically the same way. Now, because I did edit and do my voiceover to make it sound better for today's video, we're not hearing the sound from the actual video, but I promise you everything is working fantastic. So on those nights that you do lose power, and you're very bored at least this is an option that will keep you very entertained now the kindle file also lasts pretty long on its charges but you could even take it along for a long road trip keep you entertained for many hours so until then folks thanks for watching wise gamer feel free to sub up for more future videos to do with gaming and computer needs comment down below because we love to hear from you until then you guys have yourself a great day take care bye bye